Hey all you fuckers, and welcome back to Frightener 22's Saturday Night Movie Drive-In. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at 1984's Running Hot, which was directed by Mark Griffiths, who would go on to direct the Hard Bodies movies. Now, in this film, it deals with Eric Stoltz, who's a, a, like a 17-year-old punk who's put on trial for murdering his father. Um, as he's sentenced to death, he manages to escape from the cops and he ends up hooking up with a stripper who's been following his trial and awkwardly falls in love with them. So they pretty much go out on like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of journey, um, dodging the cops while this like hotshot detective is on uh, Eric Stoltz's ass. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, with that plot, where have I heard that before? I feel like that's so familiar. Something like in the 90s may have done that just a little bit cooler. And yes, you're right. You're probably thinking, God, that sounds very true romance. And you're absolutely right. The back of the box of the DVD even goes as far to say that this is actually um, a film that harks to things such as Bonnie and Clyde and true romance. So being as how Tarantino is a huge person that loves all these like drive-in vintage old school movies, you know, it's very obvious after seeing Running Hot where he definitely took most of, you know, the a lot of the ideas from Running Hot and implemented them into True Romance. Now, to be fair, True Romance isn't a complete blatant ripoff of Running Hot. I mean, there's enough there's enough differences, but there's enough of like the atmosphere and spirit in Running Hot um, that True Romance took from it. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's just talk about the movie in itself. I actually really dug this movie. I had bought it, and it's actually from. Um, the DVD company Code Red releasing, and I'm a big, you know, faithful buyer of all of their products, so I had bought this, I don't know, a while ago, and I was really into the idea of buying it just based on the title alone and uh, the plot behind it, and I had never got around to watching it until um, just a few days ago for the sake of this review, and I have to say that I actually really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool, you know, it harked back to these, you know, uh, early, mid-80s times with a really cool um, cast. Uh, mainly, um, it was the you know the acting power of Eric Stoltz that made this thing really, really cool. So I actually really enjoyed that. And it's funny, when I w watch a movie like this st uh, starring Eric Stoltz, it just begins to like further cement um, Eric Stoltz as this just like incredibly underrated fucking actor from the 80s. Like, when people think about the 80s and actors from the 80s, I think a lot of people think about people like Molly Ringwald and Emilio Estevez, and, you know, the, you think about those people for all the right reasons, because, you know, they gave some, you know, really good body of work in the 80s, but a lot of people forget about Eric Stoltz and how fucking, like, cool he was. I mean, he, he still is cool. I mean, he was garnering awesome roles in such films as Pulp Fiction, as, you know, as late as 1994, and he's still, you know, a working actor, but in the 80s, he actually kicked ass a lot more than people are willing to give credit for. I mean, think about he did this movie in 84, then he would go on to do the highly, highly underrated Mask in 1985. He would go on to do Some Kind of Wonderful and The Fly, too. I mean, there's just a lot of things throughout the 80s that he did that a lot of people just really tend to forget. The, the most thing is that he was this close to being the permanent Marty McFly in Back to the Future, but after six weeks of filming, Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale felt that he was too... Um, he was too intimidating for the role. He was just a little, I don't know, the, I forget the way that they worded it, but he just wasn't the right fit for them. So finally, when Michael J. Fox's schedule opened up, they, you know, you know, in essence, fired Stoltz. But whatever, back to Running Hot. Sorry I got off on a little bit of a tangent there. But Running Hot is actually a really, really cool film. I mean, he in the beginning when he's on trial, you learn that Eric Stoltz's character hasn't spoken since he was um, originally arrested, so he kind of has this mystique about him, but in the process of him escaping and hooking up with this prostitute that's, like, fallen in love with him, that's when the movie really takes off, because then they go through, um, you know, they just kind of go through different ways to kind of escape the cops, and, you know, more chaos ensues when the... when. Eric Stoltz's character escapes from the cops and then trying to, you know, change cars and um, ultimately Eric Stoltz is trying to get to Arizona to hook up with his sister 
to make sure that she's okay. And I'm not going to ruin the movie because I really think, especially with this one, I don't want this review to be too spoiler savvy because I actually think it's a pretty underrated gem that I think a lot of people should um, discover on their own. But I just want my words to really help you guys to go out and uh, pick this movie up because it's really cool. They, Eric Stoltz and the prostitute eventually go to Arizona to find um, the sister. And there's a huge, huge reason behind why, you know, he's so um, eager to see his sister and, um, you know, make sure that she's all right and stuff. So without spoiling it, it's a really, really important part in the movie. But I have to stress, this movie is really, really cool. As much as it does, you know, you can see where, you know, Tarantino took from Tr for True Romance and Bonnie and Clyde. It's a great... Um, addition to films like that, you know, those, you know, star-crossed crazy lovers on the run from the law. It's really cool, and it works really, really well. One minor thing that I'd like to add, and I'm so happy that Eric Stoltz actually makes mention of it in the movie, is the stripper that he runs away with, I couldn't help but watching the movie and seeing that she had these really muscular thighs and legs and this ass, were to the point where it was almost just like, Ugh, like, what's going on there? Like, is this chick a stripper, or is she a bodybuilder? So, I was thinking about that the whole movie, and there's a moment in um, the film where Eric Stoltz actually makes, like, all these, like, joking comments about, like, the way her legs look, and she just insists that she has a dancer's body, but I'm just so happy that that scene came, because I was, like, thinking to myself, am I the only fucking one that's seen that right now? Like, you know, Eric Stoltz is just watching her get unchanged in this dingy motel, and then out of nowhere, he starts, like, making comments about it, and I'm like, thank fucking lord, at least Stoltz knew what he was, you know, getting himself into with this crazy broad, but uh, nonetheless, I thought it was really cool. It definitely was a film that packed um, a really engaging story, and, uh, you know, when shit hits the fan in this movie, it really hits the fan, so, I mean, the adrenaline factor in this film can definitely, you know, get up sky, you know, skyrocket levels. And I just think, I just think it's a, a really cool, like, drive-in, you know, old-school, underrated film that a lot of people didn't know about until Code Red releasing put it out on DVD a few short years ago. So, um, I would definitely highly, highly recommend this film to all of you guys. Um, the film actually comes with an audio commentary from the director, Mark Griffiths, who I had mentioned earlier would go on to direct Hard Bodies and Hard Bodies 2. And there's actually a short interview with him about um, the making of the film. The one thing about the about the film is that when the film starts, um, the original title is intact, and the original title um, is Lucky 13, and there's a whole reason with the stripper and stuff why um, this title is Lucky 13. But even in the interview, the interview that they conduct with Mark Griffiths and through my own research online, I could never figure out why the title became Running Hot. Like, they don't even make mention of it. And that's that's another thing with the DVD release. I mean, the print looks good. You know, they, they restored it from the original camera negative, so everything looks good. But Code Red's interview skills when they're interviewing people are really, really fucking bad. I mean, I'm happy that they, you know, track down these people and talk to them enough, but I mean, they're just so unprofessional and so poorly shot, and I mean, they're just, especially this one, like, things look like they were getting good, and then, like, the interview just abruptly stops, and that's the end of you know, the special feature of the interview, which is really lame, because I would have really liked them to, you know, um, you know, kind of like, you know, peek it, you know, kind of ask him a few more things about the making of this film, because, you know, hot off of watching this movie, I was really interested to hear what the director said, but, you know, if I get around to watching the audio commentary, maybe they'll make mention as to why the title became Running Hot, and what have you, and another minor thing that I think is really fucking hilarious about the box of this is that they spell Eric Stoltz's name wrong, S-T-O-L-Z, his name's not Eric Stoltz, it's Eric Stoltz, how did you fuck that up, because they get it correct on the back once, and and then they fuck it up again in the bottom. So they fuck up his name twice and only get it right once. Whatever, it's all little bullshit, but still, Frightener 22 definitely gives this film two thumbs up for the movie Drive-In Circuit, so I would definitely recommend all you guys get your asses up out of those seats this weekend and check out 1984's Running Hot. You can't be disappointed, especially when it's coming from the highest regard of the Fright Man himself. So get out there and check this flick out. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. This is Frightener 22.